got tax cut? Nope. Dude, it was it went all the way to Calfion. How many people? Um, I would say I would say probably two plats. Oh yeah, that's it. But like people were making almost a billion silver. It was crazy. Alright, delete the bottom going next week. <laughs> you should have been there. It, I've yeah. been I've been stuck on this assignment, so Oh yeah. I understand. Yeah, I've been uh waking up at like really early and doing assignments and stuff as well. Uh, I love group work, man. It's Yuck. It's wonderful. Okay. Um yeah, just let me know when you're ready to begin. I'm ready whenever. Alright, cool. Um, you got a chance to check out that new video, right? The dungeon? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Alright, um, okay, let's get started with the podcast then. Um, okay. So, welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, today I have a ge guest, uh, speaker, Rujinx. Um, known him for a couple of years, uh, very skilled wizard, um, and also a very humble individual. So I'll just give uh, some time for him to introduce himself. Hello, I'm Rujinx. I've been playing Wizard for five years now. It's actually my fifth anniversary tomorrow. Uh, I'm a big fan of Awakening. I've been wanting Suck to get nerfed for a while. And yeah, <laughs> that's it. Okay, awesome. All right, awesome. So uh, initially, right, what, what made you... Um, you, did you feel forced, like, switching from uh, Awakening to Succession? Like, So, when Succession first came out, I remember this very clearly, a lot of people thought it was pretty bad, right? Yep. In that initial week before NA got the KR buffs, everyone was sticking to Awakening. And during that time, I actually had a, lot, a chance to play it without anyone else on Suck, so I was, like, playing Suck in an Awakening meta. And it was rough. But I could see the potential, and to be honest, the playstyle is a lot closer to what I was expecting when I first got into the game. So that's what I, made me swap initially, and then after the buffs it just became a meta class. So after you received the split teleport and the instacast uh, skills? That... Yeah. Ah, okay, awesome. Alright. So... Okay, so I'm sure you're aware of the um, Succession Wizard nerfs on uh, that hit KR, I think last week or the week before, and it's going to hit our server's next patch, essentially. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Succession Wizard nerfs first. Uh, they're going to they plan to remove Super Armor on Voltaic and also reduce the... Uh, accuracy rate from 30% to 12% and also um, Media is losing its super armor um, on the landing animation but it still keeps its front guard so this is for the absolute media and the uh, and the prime aerial media so what are your thoughts uh, on those nerfs Rujinx? Okay I'm gonna talk about Meteor first because that's the easier one um... Meteor definitely needed to be nerfed. It's like the skill that has everything you could ever want. Protected CC, ranged, big damage. It was like clearly overtuned. Um, I'm, that's not to say it won't change our playstyle by having it nerfed, but it was a necessary nerf, in my opinion. Yep. I think it'll still be viable because of how much range it has. It's just that we won't be able to see those... TP meteor plays that like wipe entire guilds before they can react. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, do you think? Um, so, it, do you think it's still like still prefer to run the aerial media over the concentrated media for large scale? And like, how how do like especially new players going to large scale? How do how do they go around this nerf to media? Like, how should you use media differently, essentially, in large scale PvP? Um, okay, so I actually really like this change because it makes the other meteor seem more appealing by comparison. So with the aerial meteor, you opted for CC and protection, 
because SA is better in large scale. The difference now is that Ariel has a larger AoE and has the CC aspect, whereas the other one has more damage, less AoE, and is more protected. So I think now there's a very clear playstyle difference. I think with Ariel, people who are doing like castle sieges and want to take advantage of terrain are still going to be running it. It's still way too good. When you're on terrain, it's very hard to get CC'd anyway. Um, with the focus meteor, it's going to make not that big of a difference, I guess, because you can still do a ton of damage with meteor. And it's not like people aren't running adamantines, so I think it's definitely a viable replacement. I just think you have to be more careful about where you're looking when you use it. Yeah, because um, the focus media has a lot smaller AoE, um, also has no CC to an internally front guard, uh, well, before, and no super armor. And so the way, I think, the way you use focus media is like you can't just randomly chuck it out and expect to do anything with it. You need to be in like a specific position or a specific uh, scenario right before you throw out that skill essentially yeah it's definitely not something you would like always include in a rotation but if like the perfect situation comes up maybe you're against a wall someone's on the ground or they're not paying attention you just drop that meatball on them and you blow them up yeah it's pretty much um just one shots most people especially if you buff up okay cool all right, so if you're still playing Succession Wizard, um, or like I don't, know, I think you're planning to go on Awakening after the nerfs hit, right? Yeah. So would what would you uh, pick for like for example Siege? Um, would you pick the pick the Aerial or the uh, Focus and like, w or would you like uh, pick a different media based off the scenario? Um. I think for me, it'd probably depend on how I feel that day. I, you got, you probably know, I really like my Pegasus. Yeah. And my playstyle kind of revolves around a Pegasus in castles. So I'd still run Ariel just because of the extra AoE. And I, I have enough faith that I can choose the right timing to use it that I won't get CC'd. I, I saw that, I saw that clip. I've seen that clip of you uh, outside the bridge of Medaya. <laughs> uh, a couple of times, I'm just like, damn, bro, that could have been like a 10 piece right there. Yeah, it, it's a risky play, been. but it, it looks like a lot of fun, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, how do you even get up there? Like, the f uh, you have to start all the way from like the building before the bridge and you hop from pillar to pillar. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's move on to uh, Voltaic. So, wh what do you think about the SA removal of Voltaic? Um, it brings a lot of playstyle changes. So, Voltaic comes out after TP very quickly. So, I think removing the SA in the context of large scale isn't that bad. You'll get caught more often, but it doesn't change what is like. Put, like the potential, the upper limit of the class. Like if you're able to get the Voltaic off and start the the rest of your SA chain, I think you'll be fine. Um, as a standalone skill, the accuracy nerf I don't think makes a difference. Um, twelve percent is still a lot. It still has the evasion debuff, and Voltaic didn't do a lot of damage in the first place. It, it like prepped your other skills, but. What removing SA does is it removes our ability to permanently rotate an SA. So lingering Earth response in Voltaic was kind of like how you stayed protected if you weren't trying to cast skills. Without that, I think you either have to full commit to diving and then run as far away as you can after your cooldowns are used, or you swap to Bolide and rely on other people to CC for you. Yep, okay. Yeah, because I know I know the Voltaic for animation is really quick, and I even right now I still get caught like I get CC in Voltaic sometimes because of desync or lag. Um, but do you, I think uh, if you run like some attack like car speed uh, add-ons before you cast Voltaic, do you think jumping into a group of I don't know five or ten people is a smart idea? Voltaic frigid. Uh, it's hard to say. Because 
If you catch all of them with the bound, which is very unlikely, you'll you'll be fine. If you catch them with an earthquake and then try to bound, you probably won't be fine. It really depends on the situation and like the timing of when you dive. If they're not paying attention, obviously it's perfectly fine. But if like they're already seeing your the rest of your ball push and they're already casting their SACCs, uh it's very dangerous. Yeah. So Essentially, you'll, you'll want to see that they were CC'd first or not paying attention before you dive in, try to vault take them if you're still running that skill. Yeah, I, I kind of see it as like... Slack was becoming more of a, of a rat class where you have unprotected skills, but if you land them, you get like a huge feed. That's what I see vault take as now. Right now, it's like, it's like that, but there's no punishment. It's just high low risk, high reward. Mm, okay, yeah. So, um, people are wondering uh, if they sh like once the Voltaic nerfs come through, if they should swap that out for Bolide. Um, I, I think you've played around with Bolide a little bit for Succession Wizard. Which, um, what are your thoughts of that skill and it as being a potential replacement for Voltaic? Um, Bolide on like as a skill on its own is actually really good. The problem with it is that you have to give up Voltaic, which was a core skill of Suck Wiz, and there's really no replacement for Voltaic. So swapping to Bolide just removes your ability to have reliable protected CC. Because right now, Earthquake is a stiff, and the only follow-up that's viable is Voltaic. Yep. Um, Frigid is a protected CC, but it's a freeze, and if you freeze someone in large scale, you're basically giving them a PA. Um, so, the if you run Bolide in large scale, it would definitely require a new combo. Mm. You wouldn't do Bolide Frigid. That's just inting. Uh, have you have you tried out the Frigid without the CC much? Yes, I actually thought about it for a while. If I were to go a Bolide build, I would swap my Frigid to the one that doesn't CC. Okay, because it's interesting to me. I don't like because that that other Frigid has less damage, right? But also has no CC, and it's not like a 360 skill around you is like a cone or something, isn't it? Or... Yeah, yeah, and that also fits the cone of Bolide as well. So. Okay, that seems interesting. So maybe it could be something like I TP in, mouse, uh, mouse move my Earthquake forward, and then uh, hit them with the Bolide into Frigid or something, just to for damage. Yeah, but not, like, with the changes right now, I'm starting to see Suck Wiz as like, um, like a follow-up class. You need someone to CC them for you. Which is yeah. honestly not bad, because right now the reason Balls of Wizards are so scary is because they can all CC. Yeah. Okay. So what would, um, so what would be, after the Voltaic um, nerfs come through, what would be your ideal, like, melee, like, engage into a ball? So what would, skills would you use? Um, I'd probably run aerial meteor with bolide and the no cc freeze oh sorry i mean like what's the skill combination you would use when you yeah yeah, yeah. i would most i would probably only engage off of an aerial meteor uh, like yep. there's there's no other hard cc that would let me dive a ball on my own mm. okay yeah that makes sense um so overall, as like as a whole, um, you think what do you think of these nerfs to Suck Wizard? Are you like um in like do you support both of these uh changes to uh to the two core skills or um I sub I hundred percent support the meteor change. The voltaic one is a little iffy for me because when you remove voltaic's protection, suck wizards on their own have no way of protecting themselves reliably. Yeah. Um, like there's no response to someone dump jumping on you and sticking on you, because you either have an unprotected CC or you have a um SA with no CC, and then they just can SA trade you. Mm. So do you think it will affect our one v one potential quite a bit? For like sure, that? it'll affect one v ones a lot. In large scale, I don't think it'll hit as hard. Like um, you won't feel the nerfs as much in large scale. Yep. Okay. Um, so I just uh, I just want to go back on the 
So the 30% to 12% accuracy nerf, you don't feel like that will have an impact at all uh, against like high evasion, like minimal impact against high evasion targets, right? So no, I 30% okay. was unnecessarily high and Voltaic's base damage isn't that great to begin with, so I don't really care. Yeah, okay, fair enough. All right, cool. Um, let's uh, let's move on to the Awakening Wizard, because, okay, so I've been paying attention to the Awakening Wizard buffs uh, over the past couple of months, and it seems like to me they just keep giving you more damage. They gave it a flow uh, onto from Hellfire and also some other skill. That flow, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's a really good skill. Um, Magma Bomb? Yeah, Magma Bomb, yeah. It's a uh, short cooldown, super armor, AOE nuke in front of you, uh, chains from Hellfire, like so you go from front guard straight into super armor. Really, really good skill. 100% uh, crit rate as well. So, and apart from that, I realized, you know, they've been giving Wizard a lot of damage buffs, uh, even this last patch, uh, along with Suck Wizard nerfs. Uh, let me just get the patch notes up. So, they increased. Um, Aqua Jail's PvP damage by 18%, which doesn't matter that much, and the PvP damage of Bolide has been increased by 17.4%, which also affects 100%, I believe, as well. And they also increased the, uh, was it, was that from guard, uh, was that from guard skill? I forgot. Uh, that, chilling Wave? Yeah, they increased Chilling Wave's damage as well. So, um, what do you think of the kind of the changes or the buffs they've been giving Awakening Wizard recently? Um, the buffs are welcomed for sure, but I think they're targeting the wrong thing. So, Awakening already does massive damage, right? Yep. The problem with the damage is that it has high base damage and reduced scaling because of the pet. So, it rewards like reaching semi-high APs, like 280 to 290, rather than building full AP. So I think it reduces the build options you have and, like, rewards only one kind of playstyle, which is high evasion and, like, keeping your AP at 280. But it doesn't address the actual problem with Awakening, which is that you have very limited survivability. Yeah. Like, when you TP in, like, uh, you're pretty much just stuck there for uh, five or six seconds, right? Yeah. Like, before PA's nerf, you would pop PA, and that would keep you alive long enough until your TP was back up. With the nerf, you can easily die before your TP's back up. Yeah. And Suck was... Oh, sorry, Awakening was itself... It, it does have range poke, but it's nowhere near as strong as Succession Wizard, right? And I think... Yeah, nowhere close. I think the strength in Succession Wizard was always its ability to secure kills from a distance. Like without having to commit up to uh close up because what once you dive in into a ball in large scale like you 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 just you just get hit by 10 20 people and not, like you just hit this desync your character your game stops working um and everything just starts lagging i don't know that's the experience for me whenever i do that in siege especially so i i always thought that succession wizard had a lot of strength just being able to um kill people from long range essentially and I like mm -hmm. for Awakening Wizard, sure, you can have your um, Water Sphere into Raban Fireball, Fireball Explosion, and then finish, go to Water Sphere into the flow, but like it's it's like very limited range poke, right? Yeah, it's definitely not like it's not even close to succession. Yeah. So, what if you were if you were playing Awakening Wizard, what would be your ideal like ranged combo for Awakening Wizard? Right now, I'd probably just like exactly what you said water sphere, the two fireballs, and then water sphere again in the flow. I think I'd only ever use the lightning range skills if I was in a castle. Yeah. Because they're like, I remember that. That's like, it, it doesn't really do that much damage at all. And it's like not that great of an AoE. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. Other than that, you just have your medium blizzard mainly. So, but yeah. Okay. Um, there, I, I agree with you on that point where you were talking about 
them targeting the wrong aspects of Awakening Wizard. Like, they just keep giving it more damage, and it never really needed more damage. I think Awakening Wizard was, or like, per skill, it always, like, dealt the, like right. a lot of damage. Per skill, it does insane amounts of damage, especially like, with, like, 20 to 30% accuracy modifiers on every single skill. Yeah, like, you just, uh, most targets, you just hit them for KD. Uh, you chuck your lava pool down, hit them with the chilling wave, and they're pretty much dead. Like, yeah. Um, the problem is that while the damage is high, getting the damage off is extremely hard. Well, you have to have someone isolated, or you have to be incredibly tanky. What, what do you mean getting the damage off? Because. Like, I, I think getting damage off on waking skills isn't that hard. It's just, like, you can probably cast two or three skills and then you're dead. Like, Right. Here's the... So, the way I see it is, right now, Succession, you do Voltaic, Frigid, maybe you had an Earthquake, maybe you had a Meteor. It's four skills that have insanely high burst, and you just leave. Awakening, to get the same amount of DPS, you have to stay in there for way longer. Yep. And so you end up dying before you can get the full combo out. So the damage per skill might be high, but you're going to die before you get even two or three off. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, cool. Um, what do you think? Uh, the other question I had about Awakening is, what do you think about the bond skills? Sorry, the core, the core skills for Awakening Wizard. Like, they're all very interesting. I think a lot of them, three out of the four options are really good. Um, even, I think even Throne Guard on Chilling Wave is still really good if they fixed how buggy it was before, but, like, what are your thoughts on the core skills for Awakening? Uh, I agree. Three of the four are good. Aqua Gel Stiff is useless right now because of how CC works and, like, right now. Because yeah. the Stiff used to be good before the CC change, but yep. the way CC applies now, it's, like, inting. Um... The core bolide is nice, but bolide's on a pretty long cooldown, and you already have cataclysm, so I don't really mind. Or I, I think there are better options. Water sphere forward guard is actually really strong. It gives you an, a response to like classes that have ranged on you, that have unprotected skills. So like ranger, and then I guess an archer could go unprotected if they want, or other casters. It's good for countering those guys. But in large scale, I'd probably opt for the Chilling Wave Frontal, but mm. I hope they fix that. Because any Splash CC currently hits you through the forward guard. Huh, surprised they still haven't fixed that. Okay. Um, yeah, because, you know, I, I think if they made one change, I would probably go back to Awakening Wizard, which is making it so that Water Sphere is a tier 2 skill add on and not a tier 1. Because having like a Frontal Guard range CC. On a five second cooldown, which um, you know has a decent AOE as well, is pretty nice to have. Yeah, the problem I'd have with increasing the tier of add-on for Water Sphere is that you can cast it on cooldown. Oh, so yeah. they'd have to make it not castable on cooldown, mm. which I wouldn't mind. Okay, so with the Throne Guard on Water Sphere, you can't you, you can't linger. So I know there's like a linger animation for Water Sphere. You can't linger that Throne Guard, right? Nope. Okay, so essentially, as soon as the projectile has left your hand, uh, and your hands, like, go down, you're pretty much unprotected, like, after that. Yeah, but because it's Awakening, you have an S-block, so I don't think that yeah. makes a difference. Yeah, okay. I think lingering forward guards don't need to be a thing on Awakening. Yeah, okay, cool. Right, okay. Um, I don't, I don't know if you have any last words about the Succession Wizard and Awakening Wizard changes before we move on to the next topic, Rujinx. Uh, all I really care about for Awakening is making it more t either t like innately tankier or giving it another mobility option so that it can avoid damage. That's all I want. Yeah. So you think maybe... So they gave an SA on Magical Evasion, right? But that's yeah. on like a 5 second cooldown. Do you think that helps at all? Like with... Uh, it helps in 1v1s. I don't think it helps in large scale. Yeah. Because you, like, dash once, you're, like, two steps from where you were, and you're just going to die anyways. But yeah. yeah, I also think it's really good for um, magic evading into a grab, especially when they make that faster in the buffs. Because mm. now you can buffer your grab with an SA. 
yeah, and uh, grabs go th uh, grabs B I frames and any kind of SA movement now as well. So pretty strong. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next topic, which is uh, we'll just go th through this quickly. I want I want to talk about the uh, end game dungeon. Uh, you s you checked out that uh, video they released this morning, Ruching. So, are you excited for the end game PVE dungeon? Uh, after seeing the video, I actually really am. That yeah. looks like content I'd come back to the game for. Okay. So, what do you specifically like about it? So, I've been playing a lot of It Takes Two. So, co-op games and puzzle games have started to appeal to me a lot, and I like how they specifically mentioned that it would have a co-op focus with puzzles. Yeah. Yep, like, I think there's, like, uh, puzzles where you have to get the right combination to unlock the gate to the next section or something. It looks like yeah. there were some jumping puzzles as well. And then th look, it also looked like the boss battles weren't, like, uh, too straightforward either, so that seems interesting. I just, yes, um, I, I just... I really like that. Yeah. I just hope that they don't make it so that, you know, you do a dungeon and then it's just the same thing every single time. I really hope they incorporate some kind of you know, uh, AI into it where it, it's like a different experience every time you go into it, right? That's exactly what I was worried about as well. I just wanted to have like some replayability. Yeah. Because at first glance, it's a really good change of pace from grinding in a circle hitting mobs. But if it can't be replayed, then there's no point. I mean, people would just do it if it was the best money in the game anyways. But Yeah, but at that point, there was there's no point in adding it if people are only doing it for the money still. Yeah. I mean, that's what pretty much like all the, like, for example, look at Savage Rift, right? I think if, I think Savage Rift could have been something uh, really good if it was a little bit more unique and diverse, but like no one does it, even though personally I would rather do Savage Rift than grind. I don't really grind that much anymore, I just life skill, but what I'm saying is that uh, I think in the history of BDO, like most of the player base don't do stuff unless it's like the best thing to do essentially yeah so it needs to be a competitive option because players in this game love to min max yeah and it's hard to do that because you can make something like very broken just complete just ruins the marketplace or you make it so it's so it's like underwhelming to the point where no one really wants to do it because it's a lot of effort like getting getting five people to commit for a couple hours to do a dungeon I don't know. I don't know what it's like for other MMOs and stuff, but do, like even getting a three-man party for Castle Ruins is almost impossible sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I think it's good though. It lets us interact with our friends more in the game rather than just talking yeah. in a Discord while we all grind separately. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. So. The other thing I want to talk about is um, quickly the. It's a little bit. I uh, should have done that first, actually. So for new players, right? Specifically, newer players that are playing Wizard and that wondering, uh, Rujinx, should I play Succession or Awakening Wizard for large scale PvP, or like even you can talk about large scale PvP, one v ones, and PVE, right? Like as a newer player, so we're talking like maybe close to around 600 gear score. Um, what would you recommend to that individual asking that question? Um, so Awakening definitely works better at lower gear score because of the higher base damage. So statistically, I would recommend Awakening, but Succession offers that split TP mobility that like makes Wizards seem like an assassin class. So if you like, you want higher APM and like the ability to just burst someone down instantly succession is still definitely fun i think if you want the more in your face play style where you just like stand tower over someone or maybe like a relaxed grind i think awakening is also good i think you have to try both out because they offer very different play styles it's like playing two different classes yeah, essentially, pretty much. I, I always, uh, yeah, like most people will agree that Awakening Wizard is a lot easier to grind on compared to Succession as well. A lot easier on your hands. And yeah, at lower lower gear scores, Awakening is going to hit a lot harder than Succession because of the pet flows. 
Okay, cool. Um, what about what about one v ones for like comparing awakening success succession? Because um, a lot of people have always said that awakening wizards really weak in one v ones. Uh, both of us know that's not true. I think if you know what you're doing on the class and you have a good grasp of the core fundamentals with like how the pet works, how slows work, and uh, when to use certain skills. Uh, I think Awakening Wizard is a very strong 1v1 class in certain scenarios. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that, Rujinx? I think Awakening has more answers to different matchups. So Succession is really... When it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's really bad. Um, Awakening has more of this weird middle ground where the matchup gets easier or harder depending on how well you know the matchup and how well you know the class. So, Awakening has a way higher skill cap in 1v1, but I think it's also much more rewarding. Yep. Yeah, because you can actually see your, like, your win rate start to increase when you like, learn some... Like, maybe you, you're fighting a ninja, you're having trouble, and then you start beating him. Like, you start going positive, and then that's, that's where I think Awakening is more fun. Because it's, it's harder, but it has a higher skill cap. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Um, before we go on talking about your experience in the AOA finals, Rujinx, uh, I, I'm not sure if you've paid that much attention to some of the other class changes um, in the KR and Global Labs patch notes, but I'm just wondering, is there anything that stands out to you that you like don't really agree with? Um, suck Mystic getting damage. Yeah. I think they needed help, but not that kind of help. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's probably more tuned for Awakening, right? Yeah, I think Awakening needed that that buff. Succession needed needed something else. I don't play the class, so I don't know what it is, but it definitely mm. isn't damage. Yep. What do you think about the Valkyrie uh, buff, like the how they got a Succession Valkyrie? Um, I don't know if you pay attention. So I don't know the exact stats, but I know in general what happened. I think Suck Valk was per, like really strong, but like it's so underplayed, it's hard to say like if they were justified. I'm not actually really sure how I feel about it yet. I'll have to see how they play after the yep. changes. Yeah, no I don't want to like say they were yeah. like the nerfs were needed before I even know how it affects them. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, I know. I know one fact is that they're very oppressive in one v ones. Especially against Caster. Um, yeah, I cannot fight Suck Valk unless I'm in Awakening. I mean, I, I can fight Suck Valk, but that's only because I can. I have so much damage, I can break through their block. And I think you can do that as well with e buff, but like, there's just not much outplay potential if you can't, like, gear check them to a degree. Yeah. Okay. Alright, um, let's move on to. So, you recently won the AOA. Uh, finals for Wizard. Uh, so congratulations for that. And uh, so I just want to uh, talk about real quick, like your experience fighting technique uh, in the AOA finals. Like how how was that? Uh, so the AOA as a whole was super stressful. Um, I had just taken like a four month break when the tournament was announced. So I was super rusty. My gear had fallen behind like twenty gear score. Um, and just like looking at the bracket with uh, us nine wizards, I was like, I could be beaten by any one of these guys. And so, but the thing was, Technique was the only one who I didn't know what their gear was. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how to build against him. Um, so in the first... What, sorry, what do you mean build, build against him, Rujinx? Because um, I went into a grind arc as soon as the tournament was announced. I was building specifically against the people I was fighting. Yep. So against you, um, I pushed my, C, my C13s, and same with Blizzard, I pushed my DP up. For Technique, I heard he was evasion, so I started investing in accuracy accessories. Okay, yep. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Um, but... The first match, I didn't really notice. Like, I couldn't tell his gear from how we were fighting. The second match, when he hit me, 
and my HP plummeted, I like I actually had a mini heart attack. I did not <laughs> expect him to hit just as hard as you or Lizard. Yeah, techniques. Uh, do you know his gear now? I do not. I still you don't. do not. Okay. Uh, he's pretty much he's been three hundred nine Kudum and like around three eighty three nine DP for a while. So uh, he's like that explains it. So like you're seeing like pretty much in game evasion, probably missing a couple of Kafra's levels on his pen armors to hit those C twenties. But yeah. Yep. Like, but can I just talk about like my AOA experience as a whole? Yeah. Yeah. Sure thing. So. I, I, after the brackets were released where we actually saw who we we're going to be fighting against, I, like, I, I was picking and choosing. I was like, this guy's going to win this bracket. And I was like planning out the tournament. And I actually predicted it perfectly. Um, but against you, it was my first fight. I was still nervous because obviously we have a massive gear gap. So I, and I didn't know what you were going to do because I know we did those like, 1v1s in Battle Arena before the tourney. And I was like, I can't tell if he's trying to pull a fast one on me. Is he actually going to play like this? Or is he going to ch change something <laughs> up? <laughs> so I kind of just played against as many people as I could. E even like other classes. I trained with Heartbreaking, the Mystic, yep. before my fight. Just to get my mechanics back. And um, Wait, Heartbreaking, isn't that a line or She's a mystic. A mystic, yeah. Um, so I was just in a mat. I was just playing BDO like 12 hours a day. And then when <laughs> I wasn't doing that, I was doing homework. And I lost so much sleep this month. <laughs> um, but like as soon as we got into our match, I, it was so hard to read you. I was like, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I went to the first round. I was like... So I want to see what he does. And you immediately e-buff as soon as I see you. I'm like, okay. So I saw Rujinx e-buffed. And I'm, so I'm just going to disengage and play passive. Wait for your e-buff to run out. And then I'm going to pop my e-buff. And I'm going to massively out-trade you, right? The, yeah. the problem was when the first circle closed in. And um, I, I tried to engage you for my Earthquake. Evade Earthquake and mouse move that forward. It didn't work, so I went backwards, right? Uh huh. And then we traded lightnings, and we lightning at the same time, and like literally, like less than a millisecond. I don't know if you remember. And uh, I don't know what happened, but your lightning connected, and mine didn't, and then it just went downhill from there. I I started panicking. I didn't realize there was like the one minute mark, and I TP'd like as the zone was closing in on the one minute mark. Like, yeah, so I think I can talk about my strategy because Wizard is an SA trading class. Like, there aren't many gaps to look for. And with the gear difference, my strategy had to be, like, very different from what I've done in the past. Because I used to be ahead of the gear curve. Now I'm not, but... Um, so my strategy was to make as little mistakes as possible and then I was just going to wait until you made one. I made plenty and of mistakes, yeah. Yeah, it was, I was just literally waiting for you to make a, mis a slip up, and then I was going to try to capitalize on it. And then, I, right. and then that, um, that backfired on me in the second round. <laughs> I think uh, my biggest mistake was just trying to trade SA into your frontals. Because I, um, I don't know if you remember, I think... There was one round where I hit you with the concentrated meteor, and then you were like, um, you were standing behind the pillar, right? And then I TP'd forward, and I did voltaic frigid, completely missed you and hit, you, hit me with high voltage, and just put me on the back end from that point. And then yeah. the biggest mistake I made was like not locking one of my heel, my small heel. So in that last round, uh, when I TP'd forward, right, and I healed. I was trying to do an SA skill and I didn't have heal locked and I did a heal, got CC'd and died, so... That. Yeah. But yeah, you played that uh, 1v1 really well, man. Like, you, you I, th I would say you played it pretty much perfectly apart from that time you were trying to... Uh, you were standing on the other side of the pillar and you were doing speed spell. I saw you yeah, speed I, spell and I stunned <laughs> you. I don't know what I, happened. I got complacent, or... dude. 
Okay, so the reason I didn't V was because I saw the stun, and the fireball was coming at me, and I was like, this thing's flying at me pretty slow, maybe I can resist it, and then just SA the second uh. one. <laughs> and then it, it KD'd me, and I was like, well, now it's too uh. late. Because <laughs> you run out of mentees as well, right? You know, build. Yeah, I was, I was hoping for that 60%. Yeah, that's risky, Rujinx, that's pretty risky. Yeah, but like, it was... There's so few chances for me to like take the whole best of three, so I figured if I got a resist, I could hold yeah. my V for an, if I made another mistake. Yep. I, I, I don't think you tried any mouse mo movement in the AOA, did you? Or I no? did once, and it messed up completely. That's... I tried TPing <laughs> on your equilibrium, and I flew across the arena. I, I don't know what it is, but like... Because uh, I did a couple AOA rounds this practice before our match, right? And it was working fine. And then I tried to do mouse movement in the actual AOA during our match. And it just one mistake can just cost you an entire round. It's so annoying. I don't, I don't know why it's just AOA that happens like that. But I think it really makes it a lot less exciting with uh, you not knowing if your mouse movement is going to cost you the round or not. So... Yeah. yeah, I hope they definitely fix that before future. before my fight with Lizard, I had some a chance to go into the AOA and actually test where I could mouse move, and then um, I basically covered up the parts of the screen where I couldn't mouse to move, so I could I forced myself not to, out of habit. What do you mean? Cover, so like you covered up, like I used chat boxes to cover the <laughs> middle of my screen. Oh, so uh, oh, okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. And then I left the bottom half open so I could keep you backwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Cool. Um. Yeah. So, do you want to talk a little bit about your five technique? Uh, because it went like three two your favor, and it was really close. I watched it. it looked really interesting. So. Yeah. It was. It was super close. Um, the first match after I won it. I gained a little bit of my confidence back, you know, a little bit of me, of my, the old self started showing, and then I got overconfident. I went, I started getting aggressive, and I forgot that I had like 30 gear score less than him. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, I just straight up lost the trade and took the back foot for the rest of the fight. Yeah, that, that's the other thing, right? Like, uh, evasion, end game evasion training to end game DR, like, you don't beat end game evasion range trading with it at all. Like, you massively. Because. Uh, you, I don't know if you remember the first time we, like, I did a recorded 1v1 with you. Like, when I, back when I was Evasion. And, like, even though there was already a big gear gap, like, you, I would hit you for my high voltage or my lightning and get you to below 50. You would hit me and, like, probably take 20, 10, 20% off, right? So. Yeah, it was super hard to play against. Yeah. So, like, um... How, how how was the like just go through each round like uh just quickly like what happened with the fight so first round i was mostly just trying to feel out how he played because i didn't get to see much of his matches his first one was against an awakening wizard so i couldn't really use that and then against wushi i know how wushi plays so i was kind of learning but i was like he's not really showing anything that would surprise me it was just standard play but he was playing it well. So I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if he was hiding something. So I was just trying to get a feel for how he played, and then I ended up catching him and killing him. But I think that like actually hurt me in the long run because uh, in the second round, when I found out I couldn't go aggressive on him, I lost the round and then lost a little bit of confidence too. Um, third round, I was like, if I if I can just win this one, I think I'll lose, or my nerves will calm down. I can go back to playing my usual calm and collected play style and just wait for a mistake. And I did end up winning it. I don't really remember what happened in that one specifically. I just, I think I caught him. Yeah, I think I'm he did some crazy sure. fucking fast combo and then CC'd him. Yeah, so... Usually I don't play in full screen, right? I tr when I was practicing for the tourney, I tried full screen, and I learned that I cast faster when people hit me when I'm in full screen. And I really? don't know why. 
<laughs> but that, I, he... there was there was one match where we were SA trading and then I froze him. And I didn't even realize it because I didn't know my frigid came out. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the casters were like, I don't think he noticed either, and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I, it was that. only after I turned around that I was like, oh, wait, he's frozen. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even but, um, know that. Is that? Do you talk to anyone else about that? Like, being hit in full screen makes you cast faster? Because I never noticed that. But I don't play in full screen that much either, to be honest. So, normally... Getting hit slows you down, like in large scale. Getting hit that many times slows you. But for some reason, when I have really high frame rate and I'm in full screen, all my hits get accelerated. I was like on Trial Warrior, I experienced the same thing. On Ninja, I was experiencing the same thing. And I think it's just tied to your frame rate. I'm not sure. I haven't tested yeah. this, but it just feels much faster. Yeah, it seems interesting. Okay. All right. So um, on to the last point. Um, so, as the winner of each uh, class, you get to submit one piece of feedback about your class uh, to Pearl Abyss, right? So, I don't know uh -huh. if you've thought about any suggestions um, or any ideas. I have many ideas, but I myself am, am unsure of what balancing it would require. So, a lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to suggest split teleport on Awakening. And before the tournament, I would have been all for it. Um, split TP on Awakening would solve every one of its problems. But I think it would just create an even more broken Suck it, Wizard. <laughs> yeah, <the lo> no, <laughs> so many people would mold over that change. I, I'm i fine with Awakening Wizard being how it is. Like It, it has a lot of potential, but it has a lot of room for punish uh, to punish as well. But I think... Giving like another SA protective movement is okay, but giving it like additional iframe like Suck Wizard, just especially with how hard its awakening skill set is kind of might be a little bit too it, much. It, yeah, it's a little overkill. I just think there should be a viable option to disengage after you've used TP to engage. Or the other way around where you have a viable engage and then use TP to disengage. Yeah. What do you what if, okay, what if Instead of uh, Hellfire being thrown on guard, it was like super armor or something. Uh, I think that'd be that hurt the class more than it helped oh, okay. because forward guards are pretty important for trading face to face. Yeah, and uh, if you don't run the core chilling wave, trading with someone is insanely hard if you are lower gear, which is what I was experiencing. It's actually the only reason I didn't go into AOA with Awakening because I was scared that I would get out traded, and I did so. Mm, yeah. Yep. Um, but I think, <laughs> I think on awakening, if especially if you know the like how to time those TP grabs and the, know the exact distance, like there's, you can catch a succession wizard pretty, pretty easily, in my opinion. Yeah, but like, the flip side's also true. If you're a succession wizard waiting for an awakening wizard to try and grab you, you're just holding all your movement for when they move forward. Yeah, but like. I don't know what it is because um, I don't know if you watched the Horsey versus Baden one v one on EU. Uh, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, but like, so essentially, pretty much all of Horsey's catches were just from grabs, and I, Baden's not a bad player. Like, I don't know if he just had because he played Awakening Wizard a lot back in the days. What well, uh, too? Because uh, I know that, like, for example, whenever I'm fighting a grab class, right? If that grab animation comes out. As I'm doing any kind of SA movement, like I'm pretty much getting grabbed, even if I'm like halfway through my SA movement. Yeah. So. Um, I think because Suckwiz has Earth's response and the succession magic evasion, as long as you keep your distance and force them to use TP to chase, you can just match their TPs and win. Yeah. I think um, in the EU match, I think the nerves got to him. He didn't keep enough distance and just thought he could face tank. Mm, yep. Okay. Or maybe he didn't expect that. Because oh, Magic Evasion essay is pretty strong. If you use the WW after Hellfire, you can gap close real fast. Yep. So I don't think he was ready for that. Yeah, you got caught a lot of time from that grab. Um, I was just really surprised that... You know, I know Horsey's a good Awakening Wizard, but that Awakening Wizard actually won the tournament. Because I don't know if you actually pay attention to some of the other... 
brackets, but like there was a lot of really really good uh succession wizards from EU that participated in that tournament. Like uh Pachu was really good. I don't know if you saw that um fight in the round of eight, I think it was Baden X versus uh another Suck Wizard and it was like one two, but yeah, there were some really good rounds in that. Yeah, I think um I think I would have also opted for Awakening if I had a little bit more DP. Or because right now my build is centered around succession glass cannon. So it was not the best experience going awakening when I was practicing for the tourney and just trying to decide if I should go awakening or not. Yeah. Cause uh I actually I think I mentioned this earlier, but awakening 1v1 is much easier to outplay your opponent. There's more things you can do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I was I was really excited to go in with Awakening and then I saw the bracket and I said never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think uh if you like yeah, some of the rounds like the amount of AP some of these guys have is like you can't trade at all. Uh and your only form of um disengage or engage is your teleport and essentially how i would see it is you would have to wait for the two minute mark every single time and then play from there with your e-buff is pretty much yeah i don't know if you thought about it like that but there's no way you're gonna um out move a suck wizard with the full arena active so yeah okay uh, la last question is interesting about the aoa right what do you think of the shadow zone mechanic like what are your thoughts on that the shadow zone mechanic. So, um, like, yeah. Honestly, I don't feel particularly like one way or the other. I think without it, it would have been all right. But, like, I get that they wanted the fights to move closer over time. But I think for some matchups, it just forced a gear check. Yeah. Like, but people didn't have an opportunity to outplay because they didn't have enough space in the arena after a certain time. Because like I was watching some of the EU matches, and there was one guy that did a full combo and only did twenty percent HP, <laughs> and then the circle closed and they got SA traded to death. What class but was that? The, uh, I forgot. I I, I, I can remember. think of a couple <laughs> examples where that would happen. Yeah, but. Like, it was just so sad to see him catch the other guy six, seven times before getting caught once and dying. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, one thing about Suck Wizard or Witch Wizard matchup. The class does so much damage to each other that, like, realistically, no amount of DP or gear can really save you from getting one combo, especially if you e buff up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, Alright. So, Rujinx, do you have any last words for, for the crown? Um... If you guys have any suggestions on what you want to see on from Wizard, specifically nerfs or buffs, or even outfits, I'll suggest stuff for outfits too, because our outfits suck. DM me on Discord. Yeah. I'll post my Discord in the stream shortly. <laughs> awesome. You, you know that, that outfit um that outfit they released, uh the, like the Grim Reaper would have outfit. Like I think if they made that main robe diable, it would be okay. Uh, I just think that like the the outfits right now, they're not very varied. What, okay. Like they this make is, all yeah. they make all wizards look scrawny. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? Okay, so this isn't a podcast, but what would be your like ideal outfit for wizard? Uh, you know, my ideal outfit would be something along the lines of what I already wear. You know, my uh my pimp suit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, more stuff like that is kind of nice. I think if we had more options like that, it would like this is the first outfit I haven't melted for Krons like since the start since I started playing. Yeah, it's the only outfit I've kept this long. Which outfit is that? It's the Jolly Winter Dream that was released last uh, winter. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. But like. I've owned every outfit for Wizard in the game, and this is the only one I've kept. That's good. Yeah, there aren't that many good Wizard outfits, I agree. 
All right, cool. Um, I'll let you uh, get get to. Uh, I'll see. I'll see you for siege in like forty ah. minutes. Should be a great fight, Rujinx. I think you're in BR, right? I am on BR side. Yes. So it's uh, BR and uh, BR and crawling versus corrupt and Barco. So BR's in castle. What would you? Right. Who do you think will win? You know, I'm not gonna predict the outcome but uh i'm getting a fat feed on your guild at least once that's of course now you probably get multiple <laughs> all right thank you thank you for your time Regings. so all right i'll see you later man later